The Secrets of Radar Museum, Our Journey to Inclusion. This presentation was originally created as a slide presentation for the London Heritage Fair 2023. The theme was London's Cultural History, A Journey to Inclusion. My name is Maya. I'm on the board of directors for the Secrets of Radar Museum, and I'm going to narrate the slides for you. Inclusion at Secrets of Radar Museum. SORM talks about inclusion and tries to practice inclusion in everything it does. We are a civilian museum that talks about military history, mostly the Second World War and Cold War, focusing on radar. We also talk about civilian radar, such as weather radar. We highlight the contribution of women and people of color within our content. But even the history of the Second World War radar program itself is about inclusion. Throughout our 20 year history, we have pushed for representation and inclusion, both within our in administration and our community participation. In the following slides, you'll learn more. The debate about Royal Canadian Air Force recruitment. Who gets to serve? From 1939 to 1942, the Royal Canadian Air Force recruitment policy regarding black applicants was inconsistent and obscure. Official policy was that all volunteers had to be British subjects and of pure European descent. However, how and if the policy was applied varied between recruiting centres. If accepted, Blacks were encouraged toward menial and labor roles, but several Black recruits fought to be placed in specialized air and ground crew positions. As the need for manpower grew, the RCAF was forced to relax its racist policy. Unfortunately, the RCAF rolled back the change in 1946 and once again required all participants of color to be forwarded to headquarters for approval in order to, quote, carefully scrutinize, unquote, whether the candidate could, quote, mix, unquote, with whites. This policy wasn't lifted until the 1960s. The first black radar mechanics, Samuel M. Estwick and Alvin B. A. Duncan. When Sam Estwick, pictured on the left, went to Halifax in 1940 to enlist in the RCAF to be a pilot, he was rejected because he was black. Writing to his member of parliament, Clarence Gillis, Mr. Estwick's case was brought up in parliament. This met with success. Due to his proficiency for mathematics, he was accepted into the radar trade and served in multiple theaters. He remained in the service after the war, serving as a radar instructor and then chief warrant officer. He retired in 1963 with the rank of flight lieutenant. Alvin Duncan, too, was initially rejected. He had a background in radio technology and experience in a local militia. But when he took the aptitude test at a recruiting center in Toronto, he was told he failed. Suspicious, he took the same test in Hamilton the next day, giving the same answers. This time he passed and was welcomed into the service. The medical officer tried to reject him with a phony condition, but his new supportive commanding officer went to meet with the doctor and his medical opinion was changed. Women too joined the RCAF, twice. The RCAF was the first branch to actively recruit women. In June, 1941, the government formally decided to allow the enlistment of women in the armed services. The 1941 Order and Council authorized, quote, the formation of a component of the Royal Canadian Air Force to be known as the Canadian Women's Auxiliary Air Force, its function being to release to heavier duties those male members of the RCAF employed in administrative, clerical, and other comparable types of service, unquote. Women entered the radar program as communications officers and radar plotters, serving mainly on coastal command stations. The women's division, as it became known, 
was discontinued in 1946. However, in 1951, as as Canada scrambled to fulfill NATO commitments, women were permitted to join the official ranks of the RCAF. Hundreds served as fighter control operators on Pine Tree Line distant warning radar stations across the country. Radar Radar veterans fight for inclusion. Remembering forgotten history. The World War II radar program was restricted by the Official Secrets Act, and no one serving in the program could talk about the work they did for 50 years. Although thousands served in the program, their story was excluded from the RCAF's official history and did not gain a permanent exhibit in the Canadian War Museum until 2012. From 1991, when the act was lifted, hundreds of veterans worked to recollect and record their stories and eventually open a museum of their own, the Secrets of Radar Museum. Inclusion at SORM, we're always striving to be better. From its start, SORM wanted to provide a therapeutic setting for seniors and disabled people, especially veterans. In its hiring practices, SORM encourages all people to apply. We actively participate in community events and celebrate our diversity. We've translated materials into multiple languages and developed tours for vision impaired visitors. In 2020, we began the challenging work of truth and reconciliation, uncovering how our history, that is the history of the radar program has caused harm and how to address these harms in the future. There are lots of ways you can learn more. Here are listed a few sources and further reading. Of course, you can visit the Secrets of Radar Museum online, secretsofradar.com, or at facebook.com slash secretsofradar, or of course in person. We're open Thursday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., or by appointment. We're located at 2155B Crumlin Side Road by the airport. Further reading for you um, that was used in the creation of this presentation includes Matthias Yost's Racism and Enlistment, the Second World War Policies of the Royal Canadian Air Force, published in 2015, Simon Theobald's Not So Black and White, Black Canadians and the RCAF's Recruiting Policy During the Second World War, also published in 2015, and Major William March's RCAF Women's Division, a reprint from Roundel, Volume 3, Number 3, October 1993. We also invite you to visit Black Canadian Veterans at blackcanadianveterans.com stories, where you will find a whole plethora of fantastic first-person and family accounts of Black veterans who served in Canada and abroad. Thank you to our funders, London Heritage Council and the Government of Canada, especially for making this presentation possible. This year, 2023, marks the Secrets of Radar Museum's 20th anniversary, which is a huge milestone for such a tiny museum. We couldn't do it without all of the funders and supporters, our volunteers, staff, board members, friends, and community partners across two decades. Thank you so much for all of your assistance.